Hey, happy Tuesday morning to you, everyone. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is number 43 in our study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the resurrection. Paul said that the resurrection would be at the end, unquote. The great majority, the huge majority of evangelical Christianity says the end is at the end of the end of time. It's the end of the Christian age. But folks, there is no supporting evidence for a supposed end of time. The Bible doesn't teach that. And the Christian age has no end. One of the favorite passages of appeal and I personally love Matthew 13, is Jesus' parable of the wheat and the tares. Jesus said, harvest is at the end of the age. Now, he uses a very distinctive Greek term here. He uses suntulia aeonos, or uh, teen suntulia to aeonos. Now, this term is only used seven or eight times in the entirety of of the New Testament. And I would suggest to you, first of all, go back and please pay careful attention to the bill number 42, in which I point out that the Jews only believed in two ages. And they, they believed in the age of Moses and the law, and they believed in the age of Messiah and the new covenant, and the age of Messiah and the new covenant has no end. The implications of this are so profound and this is such a simple point. It means, folks, if we're living in the age to come, and oh, by the way, i got to tell you, I've got all, so, all sorts of books here on my desk, uh, books by N.T. Wright, uh, books by uh, Anderson and Just and by Perrin, and, you know, just, uh, let me see, yeah, P.W.L. Walker, you name I, I've got all sorts of commentaries. And and scholarly works. And do you realize that virtually every single one of them admits and agrees and teaches that we are living in what the Hebrews called the age to come? Do you realize that? The age to come has broken into, quote, this age. Well, I agree with that 100%. But if that's the case, the Bible teaches that the age to come had no end. So how could... The current age, which is the age that the Hebrews were looking for, how can it ever come to an end? Okay, enough on that. This distinctive Greek term is, as I mentioned, only used a very few times in the New Testament. It is used again right here in Matthew chapter 13, verse 49. Now watch this. In Matthew 24, in verse 3, after Jesus had just predicted that not one stone would, li- would be left standing on top of another of that magnificent temple edifice, the disciples, in direct response to that, said, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming, your parousia, and the end of the age, the suntalia to aeonos? Now, let me ask you a question. I know that scholars, I know that commentators, Men such as John Calvin even said, the disciples could not imagine the dissolution of that temple without it being at the end of time. Really? Did they not know that the temple was destroyed in 586 B.C. and that time marched on? You see, this is really quite an illogical argument. But here's the question. There is no doubt whatsoever, and the commentators agree on this, virtually every one of them, that the disciples linked Jesus' prediction of the fall of Jerusalem and the temple with the end of the age. And yet they tell us the disciples were confused, they were wrong, they didn't understand what they were asking about. Well, that's nonsense. The disciples understood that the fall of the temple would, was representative, according to the Old Testament prophecy, that the, according to the Old Testament prophecy, there was another final catastrophe to come on the, on the temple and on the city at the end of the 70 weeks, Daniel chapter 9, and that would be the end of the age. Ask yourself the question, what age did the temple at Jerusalem represent? Did it represent the Christian age? 
Did it represent the new covenant age? You know that's not correct. There is simply no justification for that kind of a thought. Okay, this same identical term is used in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus said, go into all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end, the consummation of the age. And people like to say, ah, see, Preston, you, we got you here. Because if that's the end of the, uh, end of the, uh, end of the age of Matthew 24, 3, and if that's the end of the age of Matthew chapter th uh, 13, 39 through 49, then that must mean that Jesus is only with us until his coming in AD 70. That means he's no longer with us. You know, it amazes me, and I'm seeing this more and more, at the utter desperation and the illogic of some of the, quote, arguments that are given against covenant eschatology. Watch this. If, if it's true that Jesus would no longer be with us if he came in AD 70, since he said, I am with you until the end of the age, then if Matthew tw chapter 28, 20 actually refers to the so-called end of time, then that means that Jesus is no longer with us after the end of time. After all, I am with you until the end of the age. You see how silly that argument becomes? Finally, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26 says, And now Christ has appeared once, once for all time, at the end of the age. Soon to lead to Aeonius. Folks, Jesus did not appear at the end of time. He did not appear at the end of the Christian age. But, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, Christ appeared under the old covenant age of Moses. So here is Christ who appeared at just the right time. He appeared in the last days, Hebrews 1 verse 1, and he appeared at the end of the age. Folks, Suntalia to Aonos does not refer to the end of time. It does not refer to the end of the endless Christian age. It referred to the end of the Old Covenant Age of Israel that came, that arrived, with the dissolution of that temple which represented that age, and that happened in AD 70. And again, if you want more documentation on this, the use of this term with more evidence to show that it cannot refer to the end of the Christian age, get my book, The Last Days Identified. You know what, folks? If we're not in the last days... Guess what? The resurrection has already happened. It's that simple. Okay, thanks so much for joining me. And we've got more on Matthew 13 and harvest at the end of the age on the flip side. We'll see you there.